Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. St. Lucia scores another winning occasion as a romance destination with an underwater wedding. The Department of the Public Service continues to build capacity among senior personnel. Helen's daughters advance on economic empowerment for rural women. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. St. Lucia's tourism industry scored another winning occasion as the third annual dive festival carves a new niche market for the island as a romance destination. The festival served as a platform for an underwater wedding Thursday morning. Here's Janelle Norville. Meet Julie and Sean, the couple who took their love for scuba diving to the next level by taking the plunge literally in an underwater wedding. The couple's wedding features prominently as the highlight of St. Lucia's Dive Festival 2019. The idea was brought to the fore when travel agent Julie Gilchrist participated in the 2018 Dive Fest farm. She spoke to officials at the St. Lucia Tourism Authority about making the idea a reality, and they did just that. The couple who hails from Ontario, Canada following their underwater wedding had their destination wedding at the Royalton St. Lucia Resort and Spa, where the couple was accompanied by 22 family members and friends from the USA. Scuba diving is a passion for us. It's something that uh, early in our relationship we had the opportunity to share together. And We love uh, the ocean. We it, love St. Lucia. It just seemed to be a good It fit. just made perfect sense to yeah. do it this way. We met several years ago and uh, we just fell instantly in love and uh, it's been a long time to get to where we are now and we're so happy that the day's finally here and we can start the rest of our lives together. Yes. And I was here last year for the uh, last dive fam trip. I'm a travel agent with the travel agent next door and we were here to experience the dive fam and uh, the tourism board and I started talking about this and what a, what, an, what a great idea this would be to have this happen and so we made it happen. And here we are. The wedding was officiated by diver attached to Tikai Resort and Spa, Lester Lawrenson. With 14 years under his belt, Lawrenson had never participated in an underwater wedding before. He indicated that he was nervous at first, but just like a fish, as soon as he entered the water, it was all systems go. The ceremony went on smoothly without a hitch. The Tikai Resort and Spa crew also participated in other activities scheduled under Dive Fest 2019. Lawrenson explained that the market appears to be growing bigger and bigger every year. Every year we get a whole lot of uh, beginner divers coming along. You know, people who have never done it before, they come in, they get a taste and they're hooked. Um, training down there, introduction to diving, certification, so, you know, uh, people just basically come here to get certified. People come, they actually do part of the course, you know, abroad at home, and they come here just to enjoy our reefs in St. Lucia. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority continues to promote dive as another niche in addition to romance, culinary, adventure, family, health and wellness, and sports, to name a few. Newlyweds Julie Gilchrist and Sean Gillen's wedding represents a merger between the romance and dive niches. Dive Fest 2019 encompasses a number of activities, including a dive treasure hunt, lionfish derby, photo seminar and competition, themed dinners, street fiestas, and island tours. Public Relations Officer of the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, Jerrine Georges, indicated that the festival targets dive enthusiasts the world over and seeks to solidify St. Lucia as a dive destination. So this is the third year. The product is growing. We have Ernie George who is the lead on it and who is making wonders happen with Dive Fest. And um, with the growth that we have seen with the festival, we know that it is going to be bigger and better in years to come. So apart from the lionfish derby and the underwater wedding, we also have um, the street parties, the themed dinners. Um, later today there will be this underwater dive coin treasure hunt. So there's quite a few things happening to really top off Dive Festival this year. The third annual St. Lucia Dive Festival is being hosted by the St. Lucia Divers Association and the St. Lucia Tourism Authority and is slated for the 8th to the 15th September 2019. 
Resorts and dive shops participating in Dive Fest 2019 include Bay Gardens Resorts, Coco Palm Resort, Marigold Beach Club and Dive Resort, Island Divers, Atikai Resort and Spa, Windjammer Landing, Sugar Beach, Action Adventures, Island Divers, Dive Fair Helen, Ionola Dive Adventures, and Eastern Caribbean Divers. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. The third cohort of vendors from the Castries market have completed training under the OECS Regional Tourism Competitiveness Project, the ORTCP. The week-long training workshop was designed to build the capacity of vendors and forms part of the ORTCP's support for the upgrade of the Castries market and surrounding areas. The recent training program for vendors of the Castries market is the third of its kind. The program, which was undertaken by the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, as part of the OECS Regional Tourism Competitiveness Project, the ORTCP, sought to sensitize vendors about the project, focusing on activities relating to the redevelopment of Castries and the central market. Communications liaison with the project, Techno Frontenard, says training will ultimately enhance the tourism product offerings in St. Lucia. What we are doing with this skills training is to show them how other markets across the region and the world, how vendors cooperate in the markets, how they specialize in selling, in giving an authentic experience to visitors so that we get more visitors going into the market, having an ex a nice local experience and spending more. During the five-day training program, vendors listen to presentations from the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, Export St. Lucia, Belfond and TVET on the requisite standards and certifications for offering goods and services, the importance of product quality, as well as good business management and customer relations. Participants describe the training as educational and transformative. I really do think every vendor on the island of St. Lucia should come aboard and do this training so that they will have a better idea how to go along with business and how to operate as a small business person because one, we do not just sell for St. Lucians but we sell internationally, regionally and locally and we as business, small business person, we need to enhance ourselves. We need to enhance our business. We will need to be more proactive. We need to think long term and not short term because the world now is going regional, international. A repeat participant, Phallus Baptist, says there is always room for improvement when dealing with customers. It helps the, us vendors to broaden our awareness of our products on customer service, how to handle the guests, how to treat the guests better, how to boost our sales. You know, so it's more like um, positive impacts on us upgrading our skills when it comes to dealing with the, the foreigners or local customers. Vendors received a certificate for their participation in the training exercise. The Monetary Council registered its no objection to the decision of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, the ECCB, to approve the application for the transfer of the assets and liabilities of the Bank of Nova Scotia to Republic Financial Holdings Limited. This decision was taken at its meeting convened on the 6th of September 2019. As with most ECCB member countries, the government of St. Lucia will proceed to approve the requisite banking business vesting order for the Republic Financial Holdings Limited to acquire the Bank of Nova Scotia's operations in St. Lucia. To this end, the government wishes to invite the public and or private entities to consider the many investment opportunities which may arise as a result of this transaction. The government will continue to monitor the process through the Department of Finance to ensure a smooth transfer of operations and urge all St. Lucians to stay tuned to developments in the financial sector. The Department of the Public Service is continuing to build capacity among senior personnel by providing training through the UWE Open Campus. More in this report from Miguel Morissette. Approximately 40 senior public officers will undergo comprehensive training with the aim of enhancing their knowledge and skills in project management. Classes run concurrently, one in the morning and one in the evening on Tuesdays and Thursdays. The first of nine sessions began on Tuesday the 10th of September at the University of the West Indies Open Campus. 
Betty Blanchard is the Acting Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Department of the Public Service. The Department of the Public Service has collaborated with the University of the West Indies to provide training in the area of project management to our senior officers, that is permanent secretaries, deputy permanent secretaries and other senior officers. Currently there are a number of projects being undertaken in the public service and we saw the need to enhance the skills of our officers in order for them to execute the task in a more efficient and effective manner. The training has been facilitated by Betty Comby, facilitator of project management, UWE Open Campus. Project management is a very important body of knowledge. I can't stress that enough. Um, I like to use the example of a wedding versus a marriage. So with a wedding, it's a project. And so project management comes into play. But there's also another important body of knowledge called Quality management is related to operational work. So the wedding is the project, but the marriage is operational work. And so you really need to know those two bodies of knowledge. And the same thing in the workplace. You have projects which have a beginning and an end, and you get a unique result, but you have this ongoing repetitive work, and that is operational work. So this course is focusing on the project work and how do you manage the project work effectively and efficiently. First of all, they will be involved in preparing project charters, project plans, right? So they should then be able to even analyze projects and decide what went wrong, what went right. Um, it should make them more competent as far as uh, managing projects. Program officer at the UWE Open Campus, Yolampa Polio Springer, applauds government for their collaboration and has extended the initiative to private organizations. We are the University of the West Indies, we belong to the government of the people and, and people of St. Lucia and we are hoping that more institutions, the government has started and it is a step in the right direction and we're hoping that more organizations can come to us with a view of us assisting as much as possible with training in especially continuing professional education areas. Upon successful completion of the project management course, Participants will receive a UWE Open Campus St. Lucia Certificate of Achievement. From the Communication Unit in the Department of the Public Service, Miguel Morris at reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Cyclone ni force capable pour détruire tout ça qui est chez moi. Nous pas ça de bout yo, mais nous ça fait préparation pour protéger la vie, bien et propriété nous. Premièrement, c'est fourni un plan pour management des as pour famou. Longtemps avant saison de cyclone là commencé. Discuter plan avec famou et faire assurance que tout le monde connaît ça yo ni pour faire. Bon, tout le monde. A nous discuter plan management cyclone nous pour de l'année passée. Ou aussi doué ni un bout de provision, avec bagay qui pas besoin mettre un fridge, et qu'a doué pour check temps. Manger un tin, had, dlo, lamp, radio, battery, we med, bagay pour nettoyer ko. Provision est spéciale pour ti mamay, grand moun, moun ki malade et ken fim. Pas oublier pour replacer bagay kon dlo, manger, we med, et battery, wegli. Assure ki assurance l'auto et kay ou en dat. Exchange tout papier pour un pot de l'eau pour que je Assurez que les cailloux sont dans de bonnes conditions. Coupez tout le monde avec les pieds pieds bois qui pour les cailloux. Saison cyclone, c'est juin ou novembre. Mais la préparation, c'est tout l'année. Pas de quoi. C'est une commission par le groupe management des arts de pieds forts et la place management des arts en Saint-Lucie. Et financé par l'Agence pour le développement international Amérique, Bureau d'assistance des arts de l'autre pays. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. Welcome, everyone, to your nightly update from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority hosted its ninth annual showcase, September 8th to the 13th, starting with a charity cricket match at Horsham Cricket Club in Sussex. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority organized the event called Bat for a Cause on Sunday, September 8th to raise much needed funds for the St. Lucia Diabetes Project UK and the hurricane relief efforts in the Bahamas. Minister for Tourism, Information, Broadcasting, Culture and the Creative Industries, the Honorable Dominic Fede, 
was the official host of the inaugural charity cricket match. The Minister's Eleven included Prime Minister the Honourable Alan Chastney and cricketing legend Darren Goff. His team took on their opponents for the day. The British Buccaneers, consisting of hotel partners, travel media and tour operators. Each team played 2020 style, one innings each. The British Buccaneers batted first and at lunch were 139 all out. Prime Minister Chastney and Minister Fede opened the batting. The Prime Minister was caught out for 10, which led the way for Darren Goff to rack up the score. He quickly achieved an unbeaten 50. The Minister's 11 went on to secure a convincing victory. The event raised £8,000 for the diabetes charity, which will go towards providing medicines along with training for staff and support and education for clients. A further £3,000 raised for the hurricane relief efforts in the Bahamas. The aim of the UK showcase is to update UK industry partners on St. Lucia's tourism developments and to hear from key operators, airlines and agents on what they need to market the destination to its optimum. Organizers of the Caribbean Children Charity Shield Football Tournament are pleased with the success of the tournament as the participating teams get a chance to show their skills and build self-esteem. The Boys Training Center entered a team in the under-17 category and was recognized for their discipline, being named most disciplined team and making it to the semi-finals of the tournament. When we first went to St. Lucia, we wanted to add a charity part of the tournament and we were linked to the Boys Training Centre and we are very glad and very elated actually that the Boys Training Centre from St. Lucia are able to be part of this tournament here in Grenada this year and we are hoping that they will be able to continue their journey with us as we move on to Barbados in year 2020 with this tournament. And we also have other teams here who's, um, who come from poverty and, as I say, stigmatized and marginalized community who have never even touched a football, who were rejected from other teams. We have the Boys Training Center whose main focus is not football, but we are using football as a tool to help empower and help move them from one, one situation into another. Brown said she was very pleased with the involvement of the team from the Boys Training Center and was looking forward to their participation in future tournaments. That's your update from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. A non-profit organization focused on empowering rural women is continuing to positively impact the lives of women in the agriculture sector. Since 2016, Helen's Daughters has been making a case for the economic development of rural women through improved market access, adaptive agricultural techniques, and capacity building. The latest initiative undertaken by the organization is a rural women's academy. Ethelyn Carew is the organization's president. We started out with advocacy, then that led to capacity development, which um, are training programs. Like, for example, we just launched our six-month rural women's academy. That's at Alias Fosses. Okay. Um, and now what we're doing is we've created a social enterprise and uh, in a sort of way, a women's cooperative, you could say, um, that facilitates the sale of these women's produce to the hotel sector. The organization's president says that while it does take some time to get to rural women, partner organizations have made the process a lot easier. With women, um, I think that the mindset is that a man is a farmer. Um, though they go, people go to the market, the cashier's market and so on, they see most women, but they think of them as weaver days, as vendors. But they don't realize that a lot of these women are actually doing both jobs, farming and vending. Um, there are definitely some helpful par partners that we have. For example, the St. Lucia Network of Rural Women. The president is Robin Darrell, and she's been quite instrumental in um, highlighting some of our programs and pushing their members towards our programs and so on. So um, in that regard, there are a few rural rural women's groups that are linked to Helen's Daughters. Helen's Daughters was developed out of a winning proposal for UN Women's Empower Women Champions for Change program. And stay with the NTN Nightly. 
Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arquion. Was that an earthquake? No. What do you do if there's an earthquake? Drop, cover, and hold on. What does that mean? You drop to the ground, take cover underneath a sturdy table or desk, and hold on until the shaking stops. What if there's no table or desk? Stay away from the walls, windows and doorways. Use your hands to cover your head and face and crouch in a corner of the building. But what if you're outside? Go to an open space away from buildings, trees, street lights and utility wires. Drop to your knees, protect your head with your arms and wait for the shaking to stop. Wait a vigilant for tout ça qui est a quick way to change your way if necessary. But in the same way, no other thing that is capable of displacing your body, clazon, the port, the finet, or the appareil is capable of causing danger. Change, protect your head from any other thing that is capable of displacing. No panic. When you see the head to tremble, to cut, cover your head with a spray boot. It's a commission for the group management of the SBF and the class management of the SBF and the SBF. Et financé par l'Agence pour le développement international américain, le Bureau d'assistance des arts de l'autre pays. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arquion. Monsieur Ta Nisha, Monsieur et Madame, département qui est responsable pour l'information en gouvernement cette ci GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale pays à NTN, Capozito Nouvelle Arquion. Présente Primus Hutchinson. Le ministère de Santé a démenti l'information qui sorti à sous une vidéo de la média sociale, vidéo qui a éclamé que c'est un de ces fruits qui ont causé la maladie et la mort. Le chef officier des affaires nourritées et le ministère de Santé, Lisa Hunt, dit en contraire que ces fruits ont apporté au terme de l'infis de santé et de nourriture et pour raison que nous avons supposé ces vidéos souvent pour improuver à sous santé. Hunt déclare que a yel nou, ek a jenewasyon nou an sietan, servi menm se fri sa la, ek justeman, set li siek a kontinye servi yo, la pa an jemen ni pies moun ki mo, a ouzel ta fri lokal sa la, ek yo ka manje ya, ek se fri sa la, pa jemen fe pies son malad. Alon, Hunt ka konseye set li siek, pou pa kite yon ti video plase dout asou yo, asou tout se we chash la, qui s'est fait, la recherche de sciences qui s'est fait, toute information concernant les gros bénéfices, c'est fruit salané. C'est fruit à qui vidéo a camoutoué, c'est papaye, mago, zaboka, bruit et pomme cannelle. Selon le chef officier de nourriture, c'est fruit salané en haut de gros nourriture qui a aidé pour protéger les gens contre diverses maladies. C'est fruit salané qui a apporté aussi un pile d'autres bénéfices qui a corrigé les problèmes et aidé quand les gens peuvent abattre et résister à diverses maladies. Il a ajouté que, par exemple, les avocats qui peuvent manger au lieu de la terre, qui ont réduit à ce maladie de la terre, à ce moment-là. En parlant de ça, comme c'est le ci, qui a observé moi pour encourager maman et pour les enfants qui ont pris la tête, le ministère de la Santé a encore fait un appel pour maman embrasser les vieux de la salle. Le ministère a informé que Pendant le café, comme qui peut, pour pousser des goûts importants, les tétés, et titres que j'ai fait, car vous trouvez que cette liste bien bat toujours à sous les slaves. Chef officier des affaires nourriture déclare que les tétés femmes qui n'y ont le bénéfice, ils vont forcer pour un qui, pour à présent, majorité de monde supposé savent, les tétés qu'a fait les petits enfants rester en bonne santé, et aussi qu'a fait les grands contributions pour l'intelligence des petits enfants. Ou jis an laj 30 lane, yon chef nos de santé publik, Pocha Adjuda, deklare ki let tete fam se plime e pou santé yon tiz afan. E kwe chèch, jaboutwe de gwe la verite an wapo sa la. Nos Adjuda di ki yon maman ki ni dez afan e ki yon touve tete e ki lot la pa touve let tete a. Lot la sa ki ka sevi tete a ka sorti pli asate e ki ka vizite l'hôpital mwens. E ajoute ki 
plus en plus recherche qu'a montré manière l'aide tête femme trop primaire et ni plus bénéfice pour les enfants organisation santé mondiale WHO j'ai déclaré que l'aide tête qu'a porté plus bénéfice pour ni maman et ich li aussi organisation qu'a bay assurance là qui c'est pas seulement l'aide tête qu'a sauvé plus qui 800 euh 1000 la vie les enfants tous les années avec majorité ces enfants ça là en bas 6 mois de l'âge mais aussi il ca réduit à ce huit maman pour souffrir et puis cancer à tête yo avec maladie chez organisation de santé mondiale WHO j'ai fait recommandation pour maman commencer bail les enfants yo tété yon de l'état pour yo fait et pour continuer pour juste juste um, tu m'as dit six mois. Après ça, il y a eu des enfants qui ont fait manger, mais pour les enfants, pendant que maman a fait des enfants, il y a eu des enfants qui ont fait des enfants, il y a eu des enfants qui ont fait des enfants, il y a Le chef de ce pays, Karibla, ça c'est OECS, là, j'ai pris une décision pour assister les pays Bahamas après qu'il y ait eu des dégâts, des dommages qui la vie la vie qui pède en résultat par ça ici Claude Dorian ce chef pays au chef là prend décision pour chaque pays faire une contribution de 100000 dollars américains pour assister situation Bahamas et aussi qu'à ces jours et manière ces pays a qui en même organisation pour examiner à quelle façon c'est ça qui par même organisation pour examiner à quelle façon eux même peut aider devant un spectacle à Bahamas pour assister Bahamas Directeur général OECS la docteur Dedicus Jules parlait de importance initiative ça là et manière Dorian a fait nous voir et comprendre que nous ni pour longer la main et les un pays voisinage nous pouvait en stress il ajoute que nous tout ni en connexion en Caraïbes là il ajoute que situation qui Dorian porter c'est un qui a fait nous voir obligation nous pour tout aider quand on la famille docteur Jules déclare que des gros peines qui ba Bahamas ka so fè présentement c'est la peine tout ce pays a il a ajouté aussi hier uh, yeah, c'était Dominique Bivier ba Bioda ek Anguilla jodi a ce Bahamas ek kon changement climat c'est yo c'est une réalité il ça n'importe l'autre en ce pays caraïbes là nous pièces pas ça directeur général l'a dit que oui nous ni pour prédire ba ce pays a mais aussi nous aussi ni pour assister quand on la femme en caraïbes Cyclone Dorian de Valise Bahamas là ek fòs vent an 1985 lié pa nèt etan. Se pli fò cyclone ki ja konn an l'istwa cyclone a la terre. La lòm dommaj la se yon ki pe Bahamas ka kontinye ka kontinye konte pa dan li mo moun ki pèdi la vi yo ka kontinye pou ogmante. Ek se kon sa nou atwè bout nouvèl la mesye medam. Mwen ka remesye ou tan pou ka gade pou ka bòye invitasyon pou jwenn pi mwen ankò si de ko sevè la vi men ay pou se twa lòt nou vè la kriyòl a prezan mwen ka vive pou se twa lòt mesi yon pil primus and here's a look at what's happening to us weather wise Partly cloudy to cloudy skies with scattered showers and a chance of isolated thunderstorms over the northern Windwind and Leeward Islands for the south fair to partly cloudy skies with a few showers The tropical wave located a few hundred miles east of the Lesser Antilles is no longer associated with an area of low pressure. The wave continues to move slowly westward near 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour. Moisture and instability associated with this wave is expected to affect the region from later today. Two other tropical waves located over the central and eastern tropical Atlantic are moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. Some slow development of the eastern tropical Atlantic wave is possible during the next few days. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 3:13 p.m. and will be low again at 8:29 p.m. The tide for Vieux-Fort Bay was high at 4:20 p.m. and will be low again at 9:56 p.m. The sea is slight to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 5:52 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the Senusha Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.